Well, welcome everyone. I'm here with the lovely Linda Miller, star of King Kong Escapes, The Green Slime, and even a couple episodes of um, My one, Three Sons, correct? One my episode. One episode of My Three Sons. Hello? Hello, Rob. This is Louise. I think my husband's getting suspicious. <laughs> so instead of picking me up at the apartment, meet me at our usual place. Our usual place? Right. Listen, he's in the next room, so I'd better go now. See you later. How did you get into this business? I know your dad was stationed in Japan. Yeah, my dad was stationed in Japan. And um, be I didn't get to go to my graduation because I had to get on an airplane to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, my dad said that the little girl I used to live next door to when I was in France in second grade uh, lived there now and uh, she was having a graduation party so I went to her graduation party and when I was there I met a girl that was about my height and she was talking about how she made all this money for her clothes and spending money modeling and I, I looked at her and I said Shoot, if she can do it, I can do it, you mm -hmm. know. So I got all the information from her, and it was um, it was a charm school, and it was in Tokyo, and it was run by a retired uh, airline stewardess okay. who settled in Japan. And so I signed up Sorry. for the classes, uh, you know, to learn how to put makeup on and how to walk and do your hair and all those girly things. Mm -hmm. And I didn't finish the course because I started working. And so that's how I got into modeling. I just was at the school and, and clients came in and just booked me. So. And you initially wanted to go to Spain, correct? Yes. And you yes. ended up in Japan. But that yeah. ended up working out pretty well for you. It worked out better than going to Spain. Absolutely. Because when I was in school, I was studying Spanish and I had this dream of being an interpreter at the UN because languages are kind of easy for me. Mm -hmm. And so when it was time for dad to uh, get an overseas assignment, I asked him to put in for Spain, and then they sent him to Japan instead. Well, I think it worked out pretty well at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah, it did. Oh, yeah. In fact, when we when we landed in Japan, and I remember getting off the plane, and they um, some military, I don't know if it was Tachikawa or somewhere, and the bus taking us to wherever we were going, I had this sense of coming home. Mm -hmm. It was just, I felt so comfortable, and I don't know why. It was just one of those. It was just meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be. Absolutely. And, uh, and I fell in love with Japan almost immediately. Yeah. So you went into modeling initially, uh -huh. and then uh, Arthur Rankin discovered you. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, I was doing a weekly magazine called Jose 7, which is like a, a, a teenage, uh, like a 17 magazine okay. with fashion and makeup and a little bit of gossip and all that. And so I did it every week and he happened to see my picture and found out I lived in Japan and then he just contacted me. He somehow got my phone number and contacted me Wow! and introduced himself and I thought, I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> you Had you been familiar with the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer yes, and all that? Yes. So you knew his name at least from that. I didn't know that he was that person oh, okay. until after I met him. I see. Yeah. yeah. So you've gone into depth a million times about your uh, experiences on the set of King Kong Escapes. Can you give me one really interesting story, or one really funny story from when you were working on the film? I know you weren't initially involved with the suitmation. Mm -mm action, but you did see uh, Horo Nakajima on the set yeah. at one point. Yeah, um, the whole time I never saw him, and all of my scenes that are in his hand mm -hmm. were all special effects. So, I mean, I actually was in a mechanical, hairy hand, you know, to be his hand, but he never was anywhere around the scene, you know, at all. But one day I was coming out of, I don't know if it was makeup or hair or something, it was the end of the day and I was coming out of one of the, the areas, one of the offices. And he just happened to be there. And then Arthur happened to be there, and Rhodes happened to be there. The one there. day he was there on the set, right? One day he was there <laughs> on set, yeah. And uh, and a cameraman just happened. It just like it all came together, and they took pictures. And that's when I met Nakajima San. Wow. I met him in full uniform or full costume, and then he had taken his uh, head off, you know, mm -hmm. not his real head. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a little more frightening, that, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be. Like the face thing. I would thing. never have forgotten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a funny story. Yeah. So, um, and then I actually got to meet him, and I, my impression was that he was so tiny. 
you know, mm -hmm. I thought, how are they going to make him look big, you know? And you did a, a bunch of conventions with him yes. until his untimely passing. Um, what was it like to be reunited with him 50 years later? He, uh, did I, he remember you? Yeah, well, I don't know if he remembered me or mm -hmm. if they told him this is the girl. I see. And therefore he remembered me, so I don't know which came first. But uh, I met him uh, in January 2016 in Tokyo. We okay. did a couple shows together, and um, he just was very charming and very lovable and just a sweet guy. The two know? times I met him, he was, you know, class act. Too. Yeah, it was, absolutely. For me, that was being someone like Boris Karloff or Bela Lugosi, yeah. someone who originated that character with, yeah. with the Godzilla yeah. character. So you made King Kong Escapes. Uh, you were involved in the Green Slime film. Why did you decide to stop acting? Why did you go into acting retirement for 50 acting. years? Um, when I came back from the States, Rhodes helped me get an agent and, and get into acting school. Uh, and it was so different from Japan. When I was in Japan, it was very respectful. It was, uh, I never felt threatened. No, nobody was hitting on me. And mm -hmm. I, I never felt like I, somebody was trying to lead me down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. But when I came here, it was totally the opposite. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you hear all these stories about casting couches. I didn't have any of those specific experiences. Um, but I don't know if I didn't have them because I was too naive to recognize what was going on. Mm -hmm. you know? But I just felt, because I was so young, because I had been sort of sheltered my whole life, this whole world business, the sleazy part of the business, I'd never been exposed to it. I didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that if I continued to act, that I was going to lose my soul. I mean, mm -hmm. that's those are the only way I can explain it. Is I felt like I would lose my soul if I stayed. Now, if it had been ten years later, and I had been a woman, I was still a little girl mm -hmm. in a sense. If I had been a woman, then maybe it would have been a different story. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do over those forty-five what, years? What didn't I do? <laughs> I worked for A and M Records for a oh, while, okay. and that was so a you lot were of still fun. sort of in the business. I Music, was around, movies, entertainment. Yeah. 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 And I worked for, do you remember Mike Curve Entertainment? Uh, no, it doesn't ring a bell. Okay, he used to sponsor or manage uh, Donnie and Marie. Okay. Okay, I worked for them for a while, um, mostly secretarial stuff. Gotcha. I worked for DirecTV as a, in the production, in the promotion department. Um, and did they, any of these people know about your connection with the no. King Kong Escapes film? I mean, up until a couple years ago, now you've sort of embraced this film. And yeah. When did you go from being sort of embarrassed by the film to realizing there's a lot of people in the world who, who love this and want to want to hear my stories? Well, I, the reason I was embarrassed about the film is because of my voice. The dubbing, yeah. yeah. And because I thought... Not her real voice, not the my dubbed real voice, voice. Yeah. yes. And also because my acting, I had never acted before. I didn't know what I was doing. So I look at some of the scenes and I go, oh my God, mm -hmm. you know. And then towards the end of the film, it got a little bit better because I it was a little bit more experienced and Rhodes helped me a lot. So, but mostly it was the voice. Mm -hmm. I just thought it, it was embarrassing. I haven't seen the uh, original version. Is that your voice? In Japanese? The Japanese version? No, no they, they dubbed your- They dubbed everybody. Oh my gosh. So, but the actress that dubbed your voice in the US was different than the actress that dubbed your voice in Japan. The one in so. Japan, they, they, it was class act. Okay. okay. Because I went to, I think it was in September 67, I went to the premiere in Tokyo, and it was wonderful, you know. Oh, yeah. I thought, oh wow, that was really good. Kong! You saburanないで。この船、私が寝たり食べたりするところよ。お願い。いやいや。やめてよ。船に帰りたいの。Good. So I had no anticipation or expectation that the American version would be as awful in my... As, the voice was awful, mm -hmm. you know.
the ship, Kong. Let's go to the ship. Please, I don't want to go with you. So I was embarrassed about that, and I never told him that A&M had no idea, DirecTV had no idea, Michael Kerb had no idea, nobody had any idea that I, and they knew that I was interested in acting, mm -hmm. but no one knew that I did King Kong escapes. So at what point did you decide, this is something that I should really embrace again and maybe see the lighter side of? When I got the call from Brett Holmnick in, uh, sometime in 2015, okay. and he said that he had been looking for me, and he said, a lot of people are looking for you, and I was like, why? You yeah. Know? And, and he explained that there was a, a, a whole, a, such a big fan base for these movies. I was just shocked, you know. So he did an interview, and um, he, he published it in G Fan Magazine. And then after that, uh, Jim Cirinella gave me a call mm -hmm. and said, you know, won't you come to a convention? And I was very hesitant. <laughs> Will said, anybody show up, right? Will anybody show up? And I said to him, well, I don't look like I used to look. Oh. And he said, well, none of us do. You yeah. Know? He said, you should see the fans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, OK. So I, my very first one was Chiller Theater. OK. In uh, 2016, no, 2015, October. And uh, I did really well. And a lot of fans were there. Mm -hmm. and. They were like, oh, where have you been? And I just was, it just really was very heartwarming. Yeah, that's a nice feeling, especially something that you just kind of forgot about and pushed under the rug for so long. Mm -hmm. um, well, you are, after Faye Ray, you're the next, really, yeah. the next leading lady after that. So yeah. Yeah. you're following in the footsteps of giants. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so then I just just went with it. Mm -hmm. and because when, when the fans give you so much love and so much acceptance, how can you not respond? Absolutely. You know? You know. Now, the MonsterVerse, Godzilla, King Kong, all this stuff's coming back in the United States. Could you ever see yourself being involved in anything like that ever again? I mean, if the opportunity were there, I would take it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I don't foresee the opportunity. If I was now. directing it, I would, of course, have you in the film. Yeah. You well, know. Then you should direct. Oh, I should. Well, you know, she we'll make direct. that happen, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I would love to do something, you know. Um, hi. I would love to do something. Uh, I, I don't see that it, it being offered to me. Mm -hmm. but even even non-kaiju roles, would you ever do anything yeah, like that ever again? Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. coming back to do the convention circuit kind of brought everything back full circle, and now the acting, well, yeah, maybe I'll do a film or a little TV you, show. You know, you're not old enough, but you have stages in your life. Mm -hmm. This stage was like my, you know, up until like 22, it was exciting, it was you know, creative, you know, it was like a center of attention. And then the second third of my life was work and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm on the last stage of my life, it's like I'm back to having fun again. Absolutely. You well, that's, that's the important thing. Yeah. Um, is there any, are there any funny stories or any interesting anecdotes that people don't normally ask you that you'd like to share? Oh, I've, I've tried to go back and think about things and... I can't really think of anything except, yeah, I mentioned in the Q&A about the uh, Israeli war. The, oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that happened during my time. And about um, Henry Okawa and the facelift. <laughs> and then uh, if anybody wants to get into acting, what advice? And the advice is don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Because don't do it when you are so young and you, you don't have a strong center of who you are. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to get pulled in all so many different directions. And, you know, it's like they say the devil is the most beautiful thing in the world because he's got to make it himself appealing. Mm -hmm. So you don't know who's the devil, who's good, who's evil. Absolutely. Especially if you're naive and, and don't have that life experience uh, and you don't have an intuitive sense about things. You can get pulled into the wrong direction before you even know it. So before we wrap things up, all the friends and co-workers that you met over the 50 years between King Kong Escapes and now, now that you're doing these conventions and you're, you're a celebrity again, <laughs> do you, any that. of your friends pop by and go, 
Why did you ever tell me, Linda, that well, you... Well, everybody did. You know, my first convention I did, uh, my pastor got up while I was gone and said, well, Linda, blah, 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 blah. And I came back and I said, why didn't you tell us, <laughs> you know? So, uh, and then being on Facebook, um, just friends around the country and stuff were like, when did you do this? Why didn't you tell us about this, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, so, yeah, everybody was surprised. Wow. Well, we're so happy to have you here and back in action. Uh, Miss Linda Miller, thank you so much thank for you. talking with me it's and successful convention. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye. escapes and meets his greatest foe, the Kong of Steel. A gargantuan duel unmatched by any battle in history. Thundering 60-foot robot Kong of Steel, creation of the evil Doctor Who, criminal genius who stops at nothing. Kong, once again, dig! for life against the Copter Squad. A thousand thrills as King Kong battles the Serpent of Mondo Island. Not this Kong! Hits himself against the nation's armament. And plunges a beautiful girl into a world of terror. Ah!